Good morning everyone, I am Mr. Ish. You're looking here at an interesting video, the volume of a paraboloid, looking at how we can come up with a good equation for this endeavor. Depending on the type of derivation procedure you use, you can get a volume equation for this paraboloid which might be different than what you might see somewhere else. So depending on the convention, you can have several different types of equations show up, but they all generally lead to the same answer. What is a paraboloid? If you just take a parabola, whether it's vertical or horizontally directed parabola, and you rotate it around a line of axis, you get something which looks like a parabolic dish. Closed it is, but it is still a paraboloid. But how can we go about determining the volume of such a solid of revolution? And we will look at that in this video. In this video, we're looking at everything here directed in an upward direction. We're looking at something which is directed upwards, not something which is directed sideways. You know, generally, this right here is an equation of an x square is equal to 4py. This here is an equation of a y square is equal to 4px. There would be literally no difference here in terms of the derivation procedure for the volume. So we know that parabolas are a type of a conic section. Depending on how you look at parabolas, there are two ways for a vertically oriented parabola that you can look at an equation. You know, in terms of quadratics, you have a formula which looks very much like this. f of x is equal to a into x minus h whole square plus k the standard form of a parabola directed upwards. But in, when you're studying conic sections, you see this equation pop up. x minus h whole square is equal to 4p into y minus k because this brings like a focal point into it. But generally, these equations are the same. You know, for a vertex at an origin, a parabola with a vertex at an origin, all of this simplifies into ax square. And again, for a vertex at the origin where v is equal to the origin, that vertex, this equation down here simplifies into this x squared is equal to 4py because the h and the k, the vertex values are 0 comma 0. Hence, you have both of these equations show up. What we'll do in this video, and keep in mind both of these are parabolas which are directed upwards. Again, so there's no ambiguity with regards to that and they're both equivalent. We'll be looking at the derivation procedure for the volume of a paraboloid using both of these. Keep in mind this. This right here is equal to this and I can show you how and why. This right here is y equals that. If you look at this equation right over here and you look at this and you compare them with each other, if you take this equation you solve for y, y is equal to x squared over 4p. You're taking the 4p onto the other side. And you can also write this as y is equal to 1 over 4p x squared. Now compare this part with this part. The only difference between this and this equation is you have an x squared and x squared, that's good. But you have an a and you have a 1 over 4p. So technically here, a must be equal to 1 over 4p. That is this factor right over here is equivalent to a. The factor 1 over 4p equals a is just basically talking about the vertical stretch or the vertical compression. Whether a parabola is stretched vertically or whether the parabola is more of a flat parabola. That has to do with a. Here a is a large value, larger than 1. Here a is a value which is probably less than 1 but greater than 0. So you can see the difference. But anyhow, keep this factor right here in mind. All right, let's begin this. We're starting here with this y equals ax squared vertex at origin. You can graph it out. You're looking at something which looks like this. If you were to limit the domain over here from 0 to x, you know, like here from 0 to x, you can basically erase this part out. So you're just looking at from right here to right over here. That much of a curve, and you were to do a y-axis rotation. You rotate that curve on y-axis, your figure becomes a paraboloid as it rotates. You get a mirror reflection on the other side and you get a paraboloid and we're looking at the volume of this paraboloid. How do you go about doing this? Here's our equation. You know when you're looking at a vertical line of axis or rotation, equations must be in the x equals format. We have y equals ax squared, you have to solve for x. x squared is equal to y over a and x is equal to root y over a. This is the equation which will go into your volume determination. If you look at from your line of axis to anywhere on this curve, you have a radius which pops out. That's radius, the distance from your line of rotation, which is your y-axis up to that curve. And this right here is equal to your radius because it demonstrates a difference or the distance from here to here. And you know, if you did a cross-sectional slice over here, you'd very easily develop a circle. You'd have a cross-sectional slice of a circle with a radius, and we know what the radius is root y over a. But the area of this is pi r squared, which is pi and then root y over a. 
squared. This is all of root y over a. And you know when you open this up, you have pi y over a, which is the area of your cross-sectional slice. Each of these cross-sectional slices is being integrated from here to here, from the lower limit to the upper limit. Now, what is this upper limit? It's basically the height of your paraboloid. All of these innumerable cross-sectional slices will add up in that integral procedure and then you will get your volume formula. So our derivation will go like this. From a lower limit is zero to an upper limit h because here the height of your parabola would be a zero comma h. You have this equation pi y over a dy because this represents a single cross-sectional area of that slice and you add them up upwards over there. The fact that you have this equation over here already includes the fact that everything diverges as you go up, that the slices become longer and longer or larger and larger as you go upwards by virtue of this formula right here. You can bring out the coefficients, you have pi over a, you have zero to eight y dy. You can integrate that y, which is just a y squared over two from an upper limit h and zero. You can bring the two out over here, you have pi over two a, you have y squared, h is feeding into that y squared, zero is feeding into that, the difference of the two, zero is meaningless and you get h squared. So the volume of this paraboloid can be demonstrated as pi h squared over 2a. What we'll do is we'll take this equation, we'll push it out right over here because we'll have to reconcile it at the end with the other equation which will come up from the other formula, the conic section parabola formula, and you'll see how that reconciliation will work. So with the earlier procedure, we've determined that to be the formula for volume of a paraboloid pi h squared over 2a. We have a different style of equation here, but it's still a parabola directed upward to the vertex at the origin. You know we're doing again here an equation which looks something like this. I'm just limiting the domain from zero to x. And we're doing a rotation around the y-axis. So y-axis is our rotation line of axis. Again, every equation here must be in the form x equals. So you have x squared is equal to 4py, therefore x is equal to root 4py. And you can solve this out. You have two root py. This represents very well the distance from this line of axis to this curve, which is again your radius. And you know from here you can very clearly establish a cross-sectional slice. These slices were accumulatively added. If this is the radius, then the area of a slice is pi r squared, because these are all circular slices. So you do pi times 2 root py squared. Opening this up, you get the area of each of the slices. We can do that everything here with regards to y. You have a 4 p pi and then a y. This represents the area of each of the cross-sectional slices. In cumulative effect, you'll get your integration done. Volume with regards to y, we can actually bring out the coefficients here, 4p and pi. And we're doing everything here, as you know, from a zero to an h, lower limit to an upper limit. And the variable here is y with respect to dy. This is easy. You have a y integrating. You have 4p pi and then a y squared over two, upper limit h, lower limit zero easily done. 2 and the 4 cancel out such that you get a 2p and a pi and you get an h square as being the volume for this paraboloid which would have developed and you know the paraboloid again looks like this a closed solid solid of rotation but it's closed in all dimensions but it looks like a paraboloid it is a para parabola in terms of a cross section but in terms of a volume solid it's a paraboloid. What we have to show you that this right here is very well equivalent to that these two equations are equal. That is the volume equation here is equal to that. And we know they are because I'll show it to you by reconciliation procedure earlier. Uh, when we looked at this equation, ax squared, and then we looked at the other equation was this one right over here, where you solved for y and you had a one over four p x squared. If you were to eliminate the x squared on both sides, you'll have a is equal to one over four p. This factor one over four p is equal to a, which you know, represents how widely open a parabola is or like how widely stretched or how widely compressed. Narrow versus a stretched parabola. We're looking at that. If you take this one over four P in place of A and you substitute it right over here, you get a pi H squared over two times one over four P because that represents an A, a substitution you're making for A. You have a pi H squared over two over four P. You have a pi H squared over 1 over 2p. You flip this 1 over 2p, you get a pi h squared times 2p, and then you get a 2p pi h squared. This reconciling to this, which is equivalent to that, 
and you know both of these volumes are equivalent to each other they're just representing different types of nomenclatures but they're equivalent here you're looking at something from which you can calculate directrix and a focal point here you're looking at a coefficient in a but they're equal to each other so this right here represents the derivation procedure for a paraboloid volume Again, a rotational solid but closed in all dimensions. Do not confuse this to be open on the inside like how a parabolic dish would be. That type of volume determination would be something different. This is just a closed solid which looks like a parabola in terms of cross-section, but it's a paraboloid. If you were to actually try to determine a, a volume for a, you'd have a different type of uh, derivation procedure. You'd be looking at something like this in terms of a solid it would be literally open but then you'd have to have inner radii outer radii inner area outer area and do all of that type of determination but see the stark difference between this paraboloid and this this can actually give you a volume of the internal surface of a parabola like a parabolic dish or satellite dish this is different but that's it for this video thank you for watching have a nice day